Hi, welcome to another video. Uh, this time you join me inside my shed, which is also known as the, the golf club, uh, for obvious reasons, some golf racing stuff sort of around me. Um, but today we're going to be talking about distributors, and in particular, the distributor that is found inside the MGB. Um, the MGB had a couple of different types of distributors, one both made by Lucas, one was called the 25D4, and one was called the 45D4. Um, and the primary function of a distributor is basically to control the uh, spark um, going to uh, whichever spark plug is uh, requiring a spark at a, in a certain sequence and uh, at a given time. Um, and essentially you have a, a distributor, I've got one here, and um, this goes inside the engine and I think it's joined to the camshaft actually. Um, and this spins round um, and inside here is a rotor that goes to each of these lead terminals in turn um, controlling which spark plug gets um, electricity um, at any one time and also inside here is some uh, points um, and a condenser and they control um, when the coil is kind of outputting its maximum um, sort of voltage so that sort of high energy that's causing the spark in the cylinder to create the uh, combustion, etc., etc. So, this particular distributor is not a 25D4 or a 45D4. This is a 43D, um, and this is fitted in my car or was fitted in my car when I got it. And people kind of think these are essentially sort of more performance-oriented distributors. I don't know why, um, but it looks almost identical to a 45D4. Um, but the difference here is that. On this particular one, the vacuum advance bit has been uh, tapped and sort of blanked off with a screw in here, so there's no vacuum advance because there's no uh, vacuum port on my um, Weber carburetor sort of inlet manifold. Um, so let's have a look inside. There goes the cap. <laughs> so when I turn this uh, shaft here, you can see the rotor spinning around and that would have hit point or got near to points inside the, the rotor cap and distributed the spark. But what's different about this particular one is this big red block here, if I can show you. Normally on this base plate, what you'd see is some points and the condenser sitting around here somewhere. Um, what I've done is actually fitted a very cheap um, electro electronic ignition module, um, but we'll come on to that in a bit. So uh, MGB distributors aren't a bad design. They, they are very common to the types of um, car in the sort of same period as uh, the MGB and these distributors were wide, you know, widespread, everyone had these kinds of distributors. Um, but as time went on and people moved away from these types of distributors, the, uh, the parts that you could buy as sort of service items, so the uh, sort of contact uh, points would wear out and you'd have to change them every service. Um, they would uh, be annoying for people to change. People maybe didn't know have the expertise to change them or would forget to change them and they'd call mechan cause mechanical failure on the road. Um, but the condenser in particular uh, was a real uh, problem. So the repro reproduction sort of condensers that were coming out um, by whatever firms on the cheap, creating them of really poor quality. And I would frequently break down because of these condenser failures. So. Typically what you get is a sort of cough and spluttering sort of thing as if you were uh, starved of fuel um, or you had a weak spark or something like that. Um, but then what it would be is just this tiny component in the distributor that would be causing the, the issue. So uh, quite hard to sort of diagnose and track and then it would be annoying. It would be like a really cheap part to fit and then a couple hundred miles if you get a bad one you'd have the same problem again which would be very annoying. So, what to do about these um, poor components that you find in your distributor? And the answer is to fit electronic ignition. So, this one I've got here is an extremely cheap one. I can't remember which make it is. It might be AccuSpark or something like that. Uh, but what it does is effectively replace the condenser and the points for an electronic module. So, same as um, you would have had for uh, your condenser and your points, you're, you've got Essentially, so the, the points were controlled by this, uh, if you see on the shaft here, you might not be able to see it because of this collar, but there's a cam. Um, so as the lumps of the cam would go around, that would be what would open and close the, the points. But this is now replaced with a, 
with a collar in here and this collar has I think uh, some sort of magnetic pickup um, so this module essentially reads the sort of magnetic pulses or reads the, which when the, how strong the magnet is I think it's the Hall effect or something like that um, and it knows when it's essentially these lumps in the cam are coming round and then this would then determine um, when the coil should be uh, firing its kind of high energy out and there's no moving parts in here um, and it means that there's no wear and no service and it's always in tune um, so that's essentially most electronic ignition systems work on this principle um, so you get different ones so instead of a, a, a sort of magnet that would get a picking up the signal sometimes you get these sort of like fans sort of that go on here and they cut through like an optical beam um, inside here and then it'll be Welcome back, um, ran out of battery there, but it gave me time to grab myself a beer so we can continue the video. I did cheat a bit, it's not beer, it's not from here by the way, this is just from a can. Um, but I do use this normally on my, my birthday. Um, but yeah, anyway, I think I was saying something about electronic ignition and what it is. So effectively all electronic ignition or most electronic ignition systems for the MGB um, just replace the condenser and the points and therefore um, do away with the items which would normally service and would wear and cause your car to be out of tune or mechanical failure if they completely fail. Um, the thing that kind of differentiates cheap electronic ignition, so I think this one, um, I think it's, it actually says it on here, it's power spark, power spark, rather than, or it's similar to like an AccuSpark, whatever, they cost about 20, 30 pounds, maybe even less than that these days. Um, the things that differentiate those cheaper ones with um, the more expensive systems are the ability to be able to select your advance curve. So as the engine goes up in the rev range, you want to advance your ignition by a certain amount so that the spark is happening at the right time. Um, these are fixed in these cheaper systems. Um, so you probably aren't getting if you've got a modified engine for example you probably aren't getting the best out of it so the more expensive systems um, sometimes have a variety of advanced curves so it might say select this one if you've got a normal car select this one if you've got different carbs or this one if you've got a stage two stage two tuned engine or something like that um, and this will kind of put the price up a bit um, the electronic ignition i've got in the mg now um, is one step further than that where you can have a completely custom advanced curve. Um, kind of pointless <laughs> at the moment because I haven't like dialed it in so I've got like an off-the-shelf one which is equivalent to what's in there probably or um, something for tuned engines um, but it would allow me if I had the time um, which I should really do is to take the car to like a rolling road and have it set up properly and it'll be um, the right advanced curve for that car in that state of tune. Um, so that's pretty much it in terms of distributors and electronic ignition. Um, I really highly recommend electronic ignition because, as I said, the, the uh, sort of uh, aftermarket or newer condensers are just terrible quality and they won't last half as long as the old ones would do. If you've got sort of new old stock, then that's that's fantastic. Then go for that. But the new ones that I've I've had they they could last like less than 200 miles um, um, or it's like a lottery so from like 200 miles to a couple of thousand but you really sort of like you don't want that weighing on your mind every time you go out in your car like thinking that you're going to break down or whatever so um, electronic ignition is the way to go um, but just as a backup to my one I've got in my car I always keep this one as a spare um, in the car just in case that one fails because that's the thing about electronic ignition is that there's no user serviceable parts in there so apart from the rotor arm I mean this this is common to all these types of ignition uh, these types of distributors so you still get the, the rotor arm and the rotor cap which you might want to replace every now and again um, and in fact poor quality rotor arms can cause problems as well so best to go for the sort of red style ones rather than the black ones um, so I think something like the carbon content in the black plastic can sometimes cause a short or something like that um, yeah, so uh, if you break down electronic ignition, unless you've got another like electronic module or 
distributor then you're not going to be able to get anywhere so that's why I keep this one sort of handy in the boot of the car. Um, that's it so thanks very much for watching hope you found this useful hope you enjoyed my uh, golf club shed uh, and until the next time um, have a good one uh, see you later bye